Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of iTalk Tech. My name is Tamer and today I'll be giving you a long-awaited unboxing and first month review of the LG G4. Now I know I haven't done a video in a long time, so here's a little cinematic unboxing of this bad boy. So without further ado, let's get started. So the LG G4, what isn't there to like about this phone? I mean, just look at it. This thing is sophisticated, written all over it. Now the LG G4, I can keep talking about it on and on because it's just that amazing. But today I'm going to give you guys my first month review after using it as my daily driver. Now I broke it down into a couple categories and the first thing we're going to start talking about is design. The LG G4 is a beautiful phone with an amazing design. The LG G4 isn't made out of anything special, just some plastic unless you get the leather option like I have here. The plastic version, after using it for a little bit, feels cheap and just like what plastic feels like, not what a high-end phone should feel and look like. But the leather option takes it to a whole new level. This leather version is gorgeous and catches people's eyes as it's just so different than any other phone on the market. The leather backing feels nice and smooth, but maybe a little too smooth to where it becomes kind of slippery. But luckily you have that little leather stitching in the middle that gives you a little grip when holding the phone. Now the LG G4 has a slightly curved body and it feels amazing. It's just a very slight curve, but when you use it, you can feel the difference, especially when making a call. It's comfortable to hold and use for a long period of time and it just looks straight up awesome. The leather look on the G4 looks hand down sophisticated, but I wish LG went with more luxurious flagship materials such as metal like on the Galaxy S6 and even the HTC One M9, but I'm definitely not complaining about the LG G4 looks. So next, I'll talk a little bit about the display. So back when the LG G3 came out last year, it shook the industry as it incorporated the highest display the market had ever seen, a QHD 2560 by 1440 display. Now we see that display back at us once again in the LG G4 and it doesn't let down. The color accuracy is on point and the color temperature seems to be balanced, but definitely not as saturated as a Galaxy S6 display. Overall, it has an amazing display to look at and its razor thin bezels make it even more enjoyable to use. Like many people, I take paper specs with a grain of salt, so I'll say the specs but don't really take them that seriously. So the LG G4 is rocking a 64-bit Snapdragon 808 chip with 3GB of RAM. It comes with 32GB of onboard storage with expansion capabilities to 2TB through a micro SD card. So now what does this all mean in terms of performance? Well, it's actually quite amazing. LG has proved to us that you don't need the highest number in terms of specs in order to be fast. The now outdated 808 chip is very similar in performance to the 810 and isn't a big deal. You should definitely not consider it as a downgrade as it performs just like the flagship 810. Apps load up relatively quickly and games run great, but LG's UI seems to add a little bit of lag onto the experience which was a disappointment as LG's UI seemed to be refined and actually pretty clean this year. Now the lag wasn't terrible but it was quite shocking as it had more lag than Galaxy S6 running touch was. I even experienced it crashing on me and restarting all over again. It isn't that big of a deal and you most likely won't notice it. So let's talk about this hyped up camera. This camera has been hyped up and has been compared to many top tier DSLR cameras and it's not shocking why it's been hyped up. It's a straight up boss in the rear camera and the front facing camera is not too shabby either. The rear camera is a 16 megapixel f1.8 aperture shooter. Now the f-stop 1.8 aperture is the largest aperture seen on a mobile phone compared to the Galaxy S's 1.9 and the iPhone's 2.2. It takes super crisp photos and its color accuracy is impressive. Since it has such a big aperture, the camera lets in more light, meaning that it's significantly better in low light situations. The camera can also record up to 4K video quality and features optical image stabilization and a laser focus. So now onto battery life. 
So the LG G4 packs a 3000 milliamp battery that is removable, which is becoming an extinct feature these days. Now the battery life on the LG G4 is pretty standard. It makes it through the day, which is about 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. for me, with about 10% left. Screen on time was averaging near 3 hours and 30 minutes to 4 hours, which is a good amount, but I wouldn't count on the LG G4 lasting into the second day. You need to charge it overnight. Now in terms of battery, the LG G4 is at the acceptable level, but I really wish it had been better and made it stand out in front of all these other flagships that didn't really focus on battery life this year. Alright, now while LG isn't the biggest player in the smartphone market, it's definitely pushing out some amazing devices and showing people that they can make an amazing phone. Now is this phone for you? Well that's kind of up to you to decide. It's basically down to only two things, which design you prefer and what features you're looking for in a smartphone. I hope you enjoyed this review of the LG G4 as much as I loved making it for you guys. So go down below and hit that subscribe button as well as smashing that like button. See you guys in the next one. Peace.